Hello, this is Haku Dabin, and I am here to read to you some absolute cringe that I'm not sure if, if you'll be able to listen to. I won't be mad if you don't like the video, oh, but please maybe like the video, comment, and subscribe. You really don't have to on this one. <laughs> So we're reading a creepypasta called Jeff the Killer, kind of a an old, old one. Jeff the Killer, excerpt from a local newspaper. Ominous unknown killer is still at large. After weeks of unexplained murders, the un um, an an an. The ominous unknown killer is still on the rise. After little evidence has been found, a young boy states that he survived one of the killer's attacks and bravely tells his stories. I had a bad dream and I woke up in the middle of the night, says the boy. I saw that for some reason the window was open, even though I remember it being closed before or I went to bed. I got up and shut once more. Afterwards, I simply crawled under my covers and tried to get back to sleep. That's when I heard a strange feeling, like someone was watching me. I looked up and nearly jumped out of my bed. There, in the little ray of light illuminating from between my curtains, were a pair of two eyes. They weren't regular eyes. They were dark, ominous eyes. They were bored red and black and just, why not, terrified me. That's when I saw his mouth. A long, horrendous smile that made it every hair around my body stand up. Oh, this is kid. The figure stood there watching me. Finally, after what seemed like forever, he said it. A simple phrase, but said in a way only a man could speak. He said, Go to sleep. I let out a scream. That's what sent him at me. He pulled up a knife, aiming at my heart. He jumped on top of my bed. I fought him back. I kicked. I punched. I rolled around trying to knock him off me. That's when my dad busted in. The man threw the knife. It went into my dad's shoulder. The man probably would have finished him off if one of the neighbors had alerted the police. They drove into the parking lot and ran towards the door. The man turned and ran down the hallway. I heard a smash like glass breaking. As I came out of my room, I saw the window that was pointed towards the back of my my house was broken. I looked out to see, I looked out it to see him vanish into the darkness. I can tell you one, one thing: I will never forget that face, those cold, evil eyes, and that psychotic smile. They will never leave my head. <sighs> this is actually hard to read. Police are still on the lookout for this man. If you see anyone that fits the description in this story, please contact your local police department. And now we get absolutely no transition to this. Jeff and his family had just moved into a new neighborhood. His dad had gotten a promotion at work, and they thought it would be best to live in one of those fancy neighborhoods. Jeff and his brother, or Liu, couldn't complain, though. A new, better house what was not to love. As they were getting unpacked, one of their neighbors came by. Hello, she said. I'm Barbara. I live across the street from you. Well, I just wanted to introduce myself and introduce my son. She turns around and calls her son over. Billy, these are our new neighbors. Billy said hi and ran back to play in his yard. Well, said Jeff's, said Jeff's mom, I'm Margaret, and this is my, my husband and Peter, and my two sons, Jeff and Liu. They each introduced themselves, and then Barbara invited them to her son's birthday. Jeff and his brother were about to object when their mother said they would love to. When Jeff and his family are done packing, Jeff went up to his 
mother. Mom, why would you advise to some kid's party? If you hadn't noticed, I'm not some dumb kid. Yeah, I'm giving a hey, Emma an edgy voice. Jeff, said his mother, we just moved here and we should show that we want to spend time with our neighbors. Now we're going to that party and that's final. Jeff started to talk but stopped himself because it hurt his throat. Not that he couldn't do anything. Whenever his mom said something, it was final. He walked up, up to his room and plopped down on his bed. He sat there looking at the ceiling when suddenly he got a weird feeling. Not so much a pain, but a weird feeling. He dismissed it as just some random feeling. Here his mother called him down to get his stuff and he walked down to get it. The edge. It begins. The next day, Jeff walked downstairs to get breakfast and get ready for school. As he sat there eating his breakfast, he once again got that feeling. This time it was stronger. It gave him a slight tugging pain, but he once again dismissed it. As he and Leo finished breakfast, they walked onto the bus stop. They sat there, looking for the bus, and then all of a sudden, some kid on a skateboard jumped over them, only inches above their laps. They both jumped back in surprise. Hey, what the heck? The kid landed and turned back to them. He got the skateboard up and caught with his hands. The kid seemed to be about 12. One year younger than Jeff. He wears uh, an... No, I mean, he's he wears a Aeropasto shirt and ripped blue jeans. Well, 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 it looks like we got some new meat. Suddenly two other kids appeared. One was super skinny and the other was huge. But since you're new here, I'd like to introduce ourselves. Over there is Keith. Jeff and Leo looked over to the skinny kid. He got a dopey face that you would expect a sidekick to have. And he is Troy. They looked over at the a fat kid. Talk about a tub of lard. This kid looked like he had an exercise since he was crawling. And I am said the first kid, and Randy. Now for all the kids in this neighborhood, there is a small price for bus fare. If you catch my drift. Leo stood up, ready to punch lights out of the kid's his eyes when one of his friends pulled a knife on him. <laughs> I had hoped he would be more, more cooperative, but it seems we must do this the hard way. The kid walked up to Leo and took his, his wallet out of his pocket. Jeff got that feeling again. Now it was truly so wrong. A burning sensation. He stood up. But Leo gestured him to sit down. Jeff ignored him and walked up to the kid. Listen here, you little punk. Give my bros wallet. Give back my bros wallet or else. Why am I giving him such a deep voice? Alright. For the edge. Randy put the wallet in his pocket and pulled out his own. On knife. Oh, and what will you do? Just as he finished the sentence, Jeff popped the kid in the nose. As Randy reached for it, or his face, Jeff grabbed the kid's wrist and broke it. Randy screamed, and Jeff grabbed the knife from his hand. Troy and Keith rushed Jeff, but Jeff was too quick. He threw Randy to the ground. Keith latched out at him, but Jeff ducked and stabbed him in the arm. Keith dropped his knife and fell to the ground, unscreaming. Troy rushed him too, but Jeff didn't even need the knife. He just punched and Troy straight in the stomach and Troy went down. And as he fell, he puked all over. Leo couldn't do nothing but look in amazement at Jeff. Jeff, how'd you... That was all he said. They saw the bus coming and knew they'd be blamed for the whole thing. So they started riding as fast as they could. As they ran, they looked back and saw the bus driving rushing over to Randy he and the others. As Jeff and Leo made it to school, they didn't dare tell what happened. All they did was sit and listen. Leo just thought of that as his brother beating up a few kids, but Jeff knew it was more. It was something scary. As he got that feeling, he felt how powerful it was. The urge to just hurt someone. He didn't like how it sounded, but he couldn't help feeling happy. He felt that strange feeling go away and stay away for the entire day of school.
even as he walked home due to the whole thing near the bus stop and how now he probably wouldn't be taking the bus anymore. He felt happy. When he got home, his parents asked him how his day was. And he said in a somewhat ominous voice, It was a wonderful day. Next morning, he heard a knock at his front door. He walked down to find two police officers at the door, his brother looking back at him with an angry look. Jeff, these officers tell me that you attacked three kids. It was a regular fighting and that they were stabbed. Stabbed, son. I mean, that sounds pretty normal for and my experience for a street fight, right? No. <laughs> Jeff's gaze fell to the floor, showing his mother that it was true. Mom, they were the ones who pulled the knife I was on me and loot you. Son, said one of the cops. We found it. And three kids. Two stabbed and one having a bruise on his stomach. And we have witnesses is proving that you fled the scene. Now what does that tell us? Nothing without a lawyer. Jeff knew it was no use. He couldn't and say him and Leo had been attacked, but then there was no proof if it was not them who attacked first. They couldn't say they weren't fleeing because truth be told, they were. So Jeff couldn't defend himself or Leo. Literally lawyer up. Son, call down your brother. There yeah, cops are fakes, by the way. That's why I snorted. Jeff couldn't do it. So it was him who beat up all the kids. Sir, it, it was me. I was the one who beat up the kids. Leo tried to hold me back, and he couldn't stop me. Well, kid, looks like a... Oh, wait. The cop looked at his partner and they both nod. Well, kid, looks like a year in juvie. Wait, says Liu. They all looked up to him who see him holding a knife. The officers pulled their guns and locked him on, on Liu. It was me. I beat up those little punks. Have the marks to prove it. He lifted up his sleeves to reveal cuts and bruises as if he was in a struggle. Son, just put the knife down. Do not hit a gun on a kid with a knife. Come on. Said the officer. Lee held up the knife and dropped it to the ground. He put his hands up and walked over to the cops. No, Leo. It was me. I did it. Jeff had the tears running down his face. <laughs> Poor bro, try and take the blame for what I did. Well, take me away. The police led Leo out, out to the patrol car. Leo, tell them. I mean, it was me. Tell them. I was the one who beat up those kids. Jeff's mother put her hands on, on his shoulders. Jeff, please. You don't, don't have to lie. We know it's Leo. You can stop. Jeff watched helplessly as the cops car sped off with speeds off with Leo inside. A few minutes later, Jeff's dad pulls into the driveway. Seeing Jeff's face and knowing something was wrong. Son? Son, what is it? Jeff couldn't answer. His vocal cords were restrained from crying. Instead, Jeff's mother walked his father inside to break the bad news to him as Jeff wept in the driveway. After an hour or so, Jeff walked back in to the house, seeing that his parents were both shocked, sad, and disappointed. He couldn't look at them. He couldn't see how they thought of Leo when it was his fault. He just went to sleep, trying to get the whole thing off his mind. Two days went by with no word from Leo, who had JADC. No friends to hang out with, nothing but sadness and guilt, as it's a Saturday. And Jeff was woke up by his mother, with a happy, sunshiny face. Jeff, it's a day! She said as she opened up the curtains and let light flood into his room. It's so weird to still be going to a party after your, your kid gets arrested. Anyway. What? What's the day? Asked 
Jeff as he stares awake. Why, it's Billy's party! He was that fully awake. Mom, you're joking, right? You don't expect me to go to some kid's party after... There was a long pause. Jeff, we both know what happened. I think this party could be the thing that bright ends up the past days. Now get dressed. Jeff's mother walked out of the room and downstairs to get herself ready. He fought himself to get up. He picked out a random shirt and a pair of jeans and walked downstairs. He saw his mother and father all dressed up. His mother in a dress and his father in a suit. He thought, why would they ever wear such fancy clothes to a kid's party? I'm thinking the same. What the heck? It's a kid's party. Son, is that all you're going to wear? Said Jeff's mom. Better than worry too much, he said. His father pushed down the feeling mean to yell at him and hit it with a smile. Now, Jeff, we may be overdressed, but this is how you go if you want to make an impression, said his father. Jeff grinned and went back up to his room. I don't have any fancy clothes, he yelled downstairs. Just pick out something, called his mother. He looked around in his, his closet for what he would call fancy. He found a pair of black dress pants he had for special occasions and an undershirt. He couldn't find a shirt to go with it, though. He looked around and found only striped and patterned shirts, none of which it go with dress pants. Finally, he found a white hoodie and put it on. You're wearing that? They both said. I'm only doing one voice at a time because I'm not magic. His mother looked at her. Her watch. Oh, no time to change. Let's just go. She said as she heard Jeff and his father out the door. They crossed the street over to Barbara and Billy's house. They knocked on the door or at, and at it, it appeared that Barbara, just like his parents, way overdressed. As they walked inside, all Jeff F could see were adults, no kids. The kids are out in the yard, Jeff. How about you go and meet some of them? said Barbara. Jeff walked outside to a yard full of kids. They were running around in, in weird cowboy costumes and shooting each other with plastic guns. He might as well be saying in a Toys R Us. Suddenly, a, a kid came up to him and handed him a toy gun and hat. Hey, wanna play? He said. Ah, uh, no kid, I'm way too old for this stuff. Oh wait, sorry, I did his voice wrong. Oh, no kid, I'm way too old for this stuff. The kid looked at him with that weird puppy dog face. Please, said the kid. Fine, said Jeff. He put on the hat and started to pretend to shoot at the kids. At first he thought it was totally ridiculous, but then he started to actually have fun. It can be kind of fun to play around with the kids. It might not have been super cool, but it was the first time he had done something that took his mind off, Lee, off of Leo. So he played with the kids for a while until he heard a noise. A weird rolling noise. Then it hit him. Randy, Troy, and Keith all jumped over the fence on their skateboards. I mean, that's just kind of... That's just a sick trick to imagine. Jeff dropped the fake gun and ripped off the hat. Randy looked at Jeff with a burning in hatred. Hello, Jeff, is it? He said. We have some unfinished business. Jeff saw his Bruce know it. Oz. I think we're even. I beat the crap out of you, and you get my brother sent to JDC. Ronnie got an angry look in his eyes. Oh no, I don't go for even. I go for winning. You may have kicked our butts at, at one day, but not today. As I said that, Brett and he rushed at Jeff. They both fell to the ground. Randy punched Jeff in the nose, and Jeff grabbed him by the ears and head by him. Jeff pushed Randy off of him, and both rose to their feet. Kids were screaming, and parents were running out of the house. Troy and Keith both pulled guns out of their pockets. I mean, what the heck? These are kids, as mind you. They're like 12. 
Nobody is selling guns to 12 year olds. Not even criminals. You don't bring kids into the criminal world. That is like a huge thing for criminals, dude. No one interrupts or guts or fly, they said. Granny pulls a knife on Jeff and steps into his shoulder. Get out the knife? Why do your, why do your friends have guts? I need to stop interrupting the story, sorry. Jeff screamed and fell to his knees. Granny saw her kicked him, kick him in the face. After three... He kicks. Jeff grabs his foot and twists it, causing Granny to fall to the ground. Jeff stood up and walked back towards, and walked towards the back door. Troy grabbed him. Need some help? He picks Jeff up by the back of the collar and throws him, him through the patio door. As Jeff tries to stand, and he's kicked down to the ground. Uh, uh. Granny, you, you repeatedly starts kicking Jeff until he until he starts to cough up blood. <coughs> Excuse me. Come on, Jeff, fight me! He picks Jeff up and throws him into the kitchen. Granny sees a bottle of vodka on the counter and smashes a glass over Jeff's head. Fight! He throws Jeff back into the living room. Come on, Jeff, look at me! Jeff glances up. His face is riddled with blood. I was the one who got your brother sent to JGC, and now you're just gonna sit here and let him rot in there for. A whole year? You should be ashamed. Jeff starts to get up. Oh, you finally stand and fight? Jeff is now out to his feet, blood and vodka on his face. Once again, he gets that strange feeling. The one he has, in which he hasn't felt for a while. Finally, he's up, says Randy as he runs at Jeff. That's, that's when it happens. Something growing inside Jeff snaps. His psyche is destroyed. All rational thinking is gone. All he can do is kill. He grabs Randy and pile drives him to the ground. He gets on top of him and punches him straight in the heart. The punch causes Randy's heart to stop. Because, you know, that's totally how, how, how that works. As Randy gasps for Jeff. Uh, no. As Randy gasps for breath, Jeff hammers down on his um, punch after punch, blood gushing from. Granny's body until he takes one final breath and dies. I said this was gonna be edgy. Everyone is looking at Jeff now. The parents, the crying kids, even Troy and Keith. Although they easily break from their gaze and point their guns at Jeff, Jeff sees the gun strained up on him and runs for the stairs. As he runs, Troy and Keith let out fire on him, each shot missing. Well, they are kids. Jeff runs up the stairs. He hears Troy and Keith fall out behind. As they let out their final rounds of, rounds of bullets, Jeff ducks into the bathroom. He grabs the guitar rack and rips it off the wall. Troy and Keith race in. Knives ready. Why, why did they... They also had knives, I guess. I wonder what knives and guns in this story. Troy swings his knife at Jeff, who backs away and bangs a towel rack into Troy's face. Troy goes down hard, now all that's left is Keith. He is more agile than Troy, though, know, and ducks when Jeff swings the towel rack. He dropped the knife and grabbed Jeff by the neck. He pushed him into, into the wall. I think if Bleach fell down on top of him from the top shelf. It burned both of them, and they both started to scream. Jeff wiped his eyes as best as he could. He pulled a black to Tyrek and swung it straight through into Keith's head. And as he lay there, bleeding to death, he let out an ominous his smile. What's so funny? asked Jeff. Keith put out a lighter and switched it on. What's funny? He said, is that you're covered in bleach and alcohol. Jeff's eyes widened as Keith threw the lighter on him. As soon as a flame made contact with him, the flies ignited the alcohol in the vodka. While the alcohol burned him, the, beach, the bleach burned his skin. Jeff let out a terrible screech as he caught on fire. He tried to roll out the fire, but it was no use. The alcohol had made him a walking inferno. 
She ran down the hall and fell down the stairs. Everyone started screaming as they saw Jeff. Now a man on fire drops to the ground, nearly dead. The last thing Jeff saw was his mother and other parents trying to extinguish the flame. That's when he passed out. When Jeff F woke, he had a cast wrapped around his face. He couldn't see anything, but he felt a cast on his shoulder and stitches all over his body. He tried to stand up, but he realized there was some tube in his arm, and when he tried to get up, it fell out. A nurse rushed in. I don't think you can get out of bed just yet, she said. As she put him in his bed and re entered the tube, Jeff sat there with no vision, no idea of what his surroundings were. Finally, after hours, he heard his mother. Honey, are you okay? She asked. Jeff couldn't answer, though. His face was covered, and he was unable to speak. Oh, honey, I have great news. After all the witnesses told the police that Randy confessed of trying to attack you, they, they decided to let you go. That made Jeff almost bolt up, stopping halfway, remembering the tube coming out of his arm. He'll be out by tomorrow, and you two will be able to be together again. <sighs> Jeff's mother hugs Jeff and says her goodbyes. The next couple of weeks were those where Jeff was visited by his family. Then came the day where his bandages were to be removed. His family was all there to see it, what he would look like. As the doctors unwrapped the bandages is from Jeff's face, everyone was on the edge of their seats. They waited until the less bandage, which holding the cover over his face, was almost removed. Let's hope for the best, said the doctor. He quickly pulls the, the cloth, letting the arrest fall from Jeff's face. Jeff's mother screams at the side of his face. Leo and Jeff's dad stare awestruck at his face. What? What happened to my face? Jeff said. He rushed out of bed and ran into the bathroom. He looked in the mirror and saw the cause of, of the distress. His face, it, it's horrible. His lips were burnt to a deep shade of red. His face was turned into a pure white color. And his hair singed from brown to black. He slowly put his hands up into his face. It had a sort of leathery feel to it now. He looked back at his family, then back at the mirror. Jeff, said Liu. It's not that bad. Not that bad, said Jeff. It's perfect. His family were equally surprised. Jeff started laughing uncontrollably. His parents noticed that his left eye and hand were twitching. Uh, Jeff, are you okay? Okay. I've never felt more happy. <laughs> Look at me. This face goes perfectly with me. Couldn't stop laughing. He stroked his face, feeling it, looking at it in the mirror. What caused this? You may uh, I recall that when Jeff was fighting Randy, something in his mind, his sanity, snapped. Now he was left as a crazy killing machine. That is, his parents didn't know. Doctor, said Jeff's mom, is my son alright? You know, in the head? Oh yes, this, this behavior is typical for patients that have taken a very, very large amount of painkillers. If his behavior doesn't change in a few weeks, bring him back here and we'll give him a psychology test. Oh, thank you, doctor. Jeff's mother went over to Jeff. Jeff, for you, it's time to go. Jeff looked away from the mirror, his face still formed into a crazy smile. Okay, mommy. <laughs> His mother took him by the shoulder and took him to get his clothes. This is what came in, said the lady at the desk. Jeff's mom looked down to see the black dress pants and white hoodie for her son wore. Now they were clean of blood and now stitched together. Jeff's mother led him to his room and made him put his clothes on. Then they left, not knowing this was their final day of life. Later that night, Jeff's mother woke to a sound, to a sound coming from the bathroom. It sounded as if someone was crying. She slowly walked over to see what it was. When she looked into the bathroom, she saw a horrendous sight. 
Jeff had taken a knife and carved a smile. All into his cheeks. Jeff, what are you doing? Asked his mother. Jeff looked over to his mother. I couldn't keep smiling. It hurt after a while. Now I can smile. Oh, forever. Jeff's mother noticed his eyes ringed in black. Jeff, your eyes! His eyes seemingly never closing. I couldn't see my face. I got tired and my eyes started to close. I burned out the eyelids so I could forever see myself. My new face. Well, you can't really remove your eyelids without your eyes eventually going really bad because you need to blink to be able to um, moisturize your eyes. Jeff's mother slowly starts back away, seeing that her son was going insane. What's wrong, mommy? Aren't I beautiful? Yes, son, she said. Yes, you are. Let me go get Daddy so he can see your face. She ran into the room and shook Jeff's dad from his, his sleep. Honey, get to the gun. We... She stopped as she saw Jeff in the doorway holding a knife. Mommy, you lied. That's the last thing they hear as Jeff rushes them with the knife, gutting both of them. His brother, Liu, woke up, startled by some noise. He didn't hear anything else, so he just shut his eyes and tried to go back to sleep. As he was on the border of slumber, he got the strangest feeling that someone was watching him. He looked up before Jeff's hand covered his mouth. He slowly raised a knife ready to plunge into Liu. Liu thrashed here and there, trying to escape Jeff's grip. Shh, Jeff said. Just go to sleep. <sighs> that was cringe. That was Jeff the Killer. A story known for being incredibly poorly written and incredibly cringy. I hope you enjoyed this a lot more than I did. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment down below. I'll see you next time.